Well, we're back in London after our tremendous 10-day uh, tour of India. For 40 years I've been praying and waiting for the opportunity to return to India. Back uh, when I lived in India some 41, 42 years ago, I sold some of my own possessions and got other people to sell their possessions. We never smuggled anything, but we got accused of being smugglers and technically we broke the law. They wanted a bribe in Bombay Customs to end all that. I wouldn't pay it, so they submitted my name and it was on that blacklist all these years. That caused me actually to put the work more uh, more quickly into the hands of Indians who have done, together with some other internationals, a tremendous job in that country. So going back there has been one of the real journeys of a lifetime. Five cities, 20 meetings, 10,000 people. I'm now back here in London. It's Thanksgiving Day there in the USA, and all of our uh, focus, a lot of it today, has been on Bombay. Over 125 dead in this city where my wife and I uh, first lived when we went to India. So above all else, we'd ask you to keep praying for this country of 1.2 million people. There's just seven points that I want to touch on in these few moments we have together. First of all, HIV AIDS. We were able to visit the OM AIDS clinic, which is still being built in Tamil Nadu. And this was an overwhelming experience to speak to a group of people, all who had HIV, and to see what they're doing there. Bur Dr. Burl D'Souza accompanied us on that trip, three-hour drive from Bangalore, where the main meetings were. Uh, we would really appreciate prayer for the work we have among people with HIV AIDS. And also through literature, we're trying to engage in a massive uh, educational and preventive program, distributing a lot of copies of AIDS and You by Patrick Dixon and other material. Secondly, we want to emphasize the challenge of the Dalits, the untouchables. We met with Udit Raj in Delhi. In fact, he may have been the key person in working it out for me to get an actual conference visa so that I could legally speak in India. We went out to his schools. We met some of his men and I was able to share with some of the leaders of the Dalit movement. And I've come back with a greater commitment than ever in regard to the Dalit Freedom Network, and you can get more information about that, in regard to trying to get people here in London, in Parliament, and in the United States, in the Congress, and wherever, to be more proactive about this global scandal of untouchability in 2008-2009. And it reminds me of segregation, it reminds me of uh, also apartheid, and we all need to unite to see change in regard to this. The third thing is literature and media. I was able to visit the STL OM, now merged with IBS base there at our huge center in Segundabad. By the way, arriving at Segundabad was, was very emotional. I'd heard about this place, I'd seen pictures, but it actually turned out to be uh, three times bigger than I ever expected. And it was a great joy when they presented me with my new book, Drops from a Leaking Tap. This is a book I've been working on for about seven, eight years. Some old items that have never gone into a book. Some new items like seven global scourges, sometimes known as seven people laying by the side of the road. Pray for this tremendous literature ministry in which they're also exporting low-priced books to other parts of the world. Another thing I wanted to mention was the whole challenge of the schools. We've opened now about 80 schools and some of you who are watching this uh, video blog, you've participated with us in those schools. Thank you very much. I was able to visit two or three schools and, and speak to the students. You'll see the welcome of, uh, that they gave me in Bangalore uh, with the students there lined up by the side of the road, and it was all very emotional. To be honest, I cried many times with joy and just overwhelmed emotion to be back there in India again. Pray that we'll be able to open more schools. Pray for the transportation needs. These are schools for Dalits who are getting the first 
opportunity ever to have English education. That's really the only way, or one of the main ways, they will break out of this almost like slavery that they live in there in India. We really want to send you Joseph D'Souza's book about the Dalits. A new edition is coming out. We'd like you also to read, and we'd be happy to send you as a gift, Joseph D'Souza's book on the side of angels about human rights and the importance of us as believers getting involved in social concern and human rights issues. We've already been offering on our website for a long time Debbie Meroff's important book, True Grit. And that's another area of challenge, the challenge of the women of India. Huge numbers of women sold into sex slavery. Uh, women, uh, little boys and girls that are forced to work in factories. All of these things are very much on our hearts. And we need your partnership. We need your prayers. We need your financial support if we're going to be able to take uh, serious steps forward. There are now 2,000 people with Operation Mobilization in India. Film is another challenge. And I was able to visit the Daystar office, which is a major partnership with OM. And we just have dozens and dozens of film teams now using DVD and those kind of projectors to take this Indian Jesus film in many languages all over the country. And if you feel you could ever use that film in one of the languages of India, I'd be happy to try to get a sample of that film to you in DVD. And then lastly, I wanted to mention the Good Shepherd churches. All of these first 40 years of our work in India, we mainly have worked with other churches, and we have tremendous relationships with other churches. We've trained tens of thousands of Indians. Many of them are in leadership in churches. But in recent years, with so many Dalits coming to Christ and the complexity of that, the leaders in India felt we must launch our own movement, and so we have good shepherd churches, about two and a half thousand of them. And I was able to go to a baptism and able to minister in uh, one or two of those churches while I was there in India. And that was surely one of the highlights. God has blessed this work. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. There are open doors for internationals to also work together with Indians. And of course, there are many agencies and many great churches that God is using. Joseph D'Souza is also the president of the All India Council, and we hope you'll pray for that ministry as well, as they represent the believers with the government of India. One of the greatest crises right now is Orissa, and we beg of you to pray more for Orissa and for the All India Christian Council that's trying to help resolve that situation. God bless you as you get more involved in the land of India. Let us send you some information. And we just hope that you'll be able to share this blog with as many people as possible.